Hey guys, and welcome back to another Friday Facts discussion. Um, apparently my OBS is overloaded, thank you. And uh, yeah, I'm here with Root, Gepwin, and A Cry in Shame. Hey, Hello. Lads. Hey, everybody. And uh, Friday Facts. So this is another short, pretty simple one. Uh, I mean, there's actually not that much to discuss, to be honest. Oh, but it's a little um, bit exciting. Yeah, a little bit. It's, it's, yeah, it's not, a, it's not exciting. It's just there isn't a lot to talk about. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. So, so they're adding. Um, apparently, they've all been sick, um, and they're getting better. So, things for fifteen are moving along nicely, which is great. Uh, they are working. Uh, Clonin did something uh, like with a mod GUI change for modders. We uh, we have yeah, like a framework. Like now. A, there's, there's a yeah, which should make yeah. it easier. So your yeah, much... buttons won't be all terrible and cruddy and hard to read. And... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, and like spaced wrong and uh -oh. yeah, it just looks gross he... across the top. They just created a standard, pretty much. Yeah. Right. So this this first picture is what it looks like now. Usually, when you have multiple mods with GUIs, and then down here is like what it would look like in fifteen if the modders use the kind of like template, I guess. Mm. It's a framework, okay. yeah. Um, and because it's that's... pretty much they created a function specifically for creating the GUI that way. Right. Exactly. Uh, which I mean, I think it's cool. I, you know, it's always good when they add support for modders because you know the modders add an insane amount of content to the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. By adding adding that support as well, it just helps everything look nice as well. Like, yeah. I, I find when I'm using mods, I want them to fit really nicely with the game. I don't like mods that seem like they're hacked <laughs> into working. And yeah. make, making them fit into the GUI uh, is really, really nice, I think. It's, it's a really yeah. good step. And it's just going to, you know, it's just going to encourage modders to keep doing their thing. And it's going to give them more tools to make good stuff, which I think is great. Fantastic. Uh, and Factorio is becoming like the most mod friendly game I've ever seen with the with the in menu downloads and the easy toggle ability and now the the cleaned up GUI. On, on the player yeah. side, definitely. On the player side, definitely. I think there's still <laughs> some work to go on like the behind the scenes with the API and and the the, the, the kind of the tools behind the scenes. But um, yeah, no, you're definitely right. It, it's it's kind of indicative of a little bit of a shift in some games that are bringing in this not just mod support but almost mod encouragement where you've got these in-game tools to allow you to mod your game very easily um another that i can think of is rimworld where you can you know you can go through and you can grab mods from inside the game admittedly it just goes to steam and then you you just use the workshop but same kind of idea where yeah, mod mods are not just supported but almost encouraged because developers are realizing that limitations are good. Uh, that they're they're you know focusing in on creating a core game and then leaving all the extra stuff to the modders. Yeah, it's exactly. One of those, it's one of those things where it's you spend all this time creating a product and then you leave it open to the market and the market just creates content for the very thing you're selling. Hmm. So yeah, and, and just makes really. it better. Yeah, and then and, and I'm one of those people who almost always plays vanilla in most games. In fact, Torio is the one where I've used the most mods just because of how easy they've made it for the player side. Mm. So it's really just encouraging and opening up to people, especially since if you think about it, Factorio is like a huge game, but it really doesn't have that much base content. Like we no. we can finish up a, a pretty simple base that builds more or less everything in like three four hours. True. Well, we mm -hmm. we have pretty much, you know, and I've yeah. I've done like what twelve episodes, ten episodes. <laughs> By the time I forgot a few, <laughs> and yeah, we've <laughs> we've kind of got it done. Like the like the the depth and the complexity comes from within the game. It's uh, you know the whole idea of um, complexity from simplicity, where you know you're just adding layers from what's already there. And yeah, like you say, I I, no I normally play. Fairly vanilla in some games, um, but some I mod quite heavily. And Factorio, that... Factorio has always been one of the games where I um, I don't mod it that heavily, actually. 
see, there's certain games that after I started modding and like messing with things, I realized that there's like there's just a part of the game that's missing in mm-hmm. spirit. And games like, for instance, Minecraft and Factorio are those games where I felt that after I've played with mods for a little while, it's almost hard for me to go back to vanilla because I'm, I enjoyed the mods so much. Yeah, they, they kind of add right. add what's missing. Yeah. So so that's good. They're, they're adding more mod support. It'll make it cleaner, make it easier, hopefully, for modders. Uh, and then the second half, uh, which is pretty much now the entirety, uh, this is the, the whole Friday fact is quite short, but... Um, station colors. So uh, Vaclav um, actually teased this on Reddit a few days ago. I don't know if any of you guys saw it, but yeah, it was like super highly that. upvoted. Um, so what, the, the it wasn't colors. exactly a um, a secret then, is what you're saying? Uh, no, for anyone who follows the subreddit, it, it's not. It wasn't a secret. I mean, I knew about this before the Friday facts, just because mm. you know he he showed like a. A little animation of it um yeah right. so yeah you can you can color your stations in 0.15 um to match you know whatever your locomotive color is and uh, on top of that you can copy paste between stations and like like the the color or from a locomotive to a station to copy the exact color as well cool fantastic so, nice. so we can the make them look pretty <laughs> Yeah, I've I've I like it. I have I love the idea of recoloring trains, and then when I'm actually in there doing it, I just don't bother. <laughs> well, I I feel like as like as the system is right now, having a colored train doesn't necessarily really matter. It's more of the actual names. I find that with this addition to it, it makes a little bit more sense because you can eyeball what train is going where. Right, although I would think that depending how big your base is, you'd pretty quickly run out of uh, like colors. Like I, I know you can set the RGB and stuff, but like distinguishable colors, you know. I mean, <laughs> if you're looking at yeah, yeah, five yeah. different variants colors of red, infinite. well, yeah. No, but the, the way that I'd go about it is you would just like, for instance, all the iron trains would be blue, all the oil trains will be black, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, and, and it's and, gonna get interesting with the. They're, they're putting in some some more uh, circuit connectivity. I think in in fifteen they were saying for trains. Yeah. So it's just going to get even more confusing. Coloring the trains may be a really good thing there when you can change where they're going on the fly and have the circuits read stuff and send stuff and do who knows what. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. If you can circuit change the colors, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> I somehow Cause... doubt it. Yeah, because then you could, why? But then, you could, because <laughs> why, then you could, yeah. have, you could have you could have omni trains. So this way, you could just have a train that just picks up from one location, drops off another location, and it doesn't matter. You don't have to like spe- specify this is an oil train, this is an iron train. These are just trains that pick up and drop off stuff. So then, when it's like, all right, this needs to load up iron, it then changes to blue to signify that it's loading iron. I think that would be kind of cool. That would be cool. It would be cool. It sounds like a disaster waiting to happen, but <laughs> <It does. laughs> I mean, just the idea of sending one train to like change between like four different products just sounds like a massive <laughs> headache. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I would do it anyway. Yeah, I was just thinking that of course. Like, we don't know what the extent of the circuit interactivity with the trains is going to be yet, but if it lets you like change station programming on the fly, having your trains actually colored will be way less confusing because you can just glance at it and go, oh, that's one of my old trains going off to who knows where because it's being decided by the circuitry instead of like, what the heck is this train? Where is it going? Like, Why is its programming all mm-hmm. messed up? I don't know what's going on. Yeah. So you, you're, yeah, you're actually talking about um, being able to set up almost like a request system where yes. the different oil outposts will say, I'm full, come pick up what I've got. And then a yes. train will get tasked right. to go and pick it up. Is, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, which exactly. you can sort of do now. We could set that up now, but it's complicated, and that would make it so yeah. much better. But... Um, in regards to having circuits actually change the color of train stops, I don't even know. I don't Even if they wanted to, I feel like that's not actually possible. Um, 
Because I know, you, obviously, even now, you can change light colors with circuit stuff, but I think that's different because lights are actually, like, projecting something. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to yeah. be able to change colors. It'd be cool, but it doesn't make sense to be able I mean, to do so, that. So yeah. what you, it doesn't make sense. What you could do is you'd have to have it take possibly three inputs and be able to set the RGB based on those different inputs. Yeah. Right. I think we're drifting off the track here, lads, <laughs> to be yeah. honest. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think so. All puns intended. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're derailing well, the conversation. Well, I see that they favor your your approach to stations where you have a little bit off the end so it looks okay, Root. Yeah, well, I, I thought that that was reasonable. Like, otherwise it looks like it's run off the end of the tracks. And, True. and you, and you mean, can see, and you can see, like the the bumper looks like it, it lines up with the front of the train. You know, it works well. Totally. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, I think that that does it. There wasn't much to talk about. Um, that's about it. That's it for this one. And unless you guys have anything else to add on topic, because uh, we're already like I don't know how long, but probably longer than we should be for this amount of information. Yeah, eleven yeah, minutes two, and two eight things. seconds. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I think, I think we should wrap it up here. Yep, sounds good. Sounds great. See you later, All gentlemen. Right. Alrighty, see you later. later. Thank Bye you everyone all. for watching. We'd love to hear your feedback in the comments and uh take care. Bye.